Anyway, if you guys are just tuning in, this is game number two now between Big Ego Crew on the Legion side and Hex on the Hellborn side. Uh, we had a pretty entertaining game number one, safe to say, with some uh, a couple picks that we don't get to see too often. The Devourer, the Artesia specifically. Um, so yeah, looking forward to see what we what happens in uh, game number two now. Yeah. It was a nice that the picks that we don't see often ended up having kind of the most impact. That's and true, actually. <clears throat> Perhaps they were underestimated, you could even say. Oh, yeah. So okay. anyway, what do you think we're going to see from uh, Big Ego Crew here in game number two? They're, they're one of those teams that when they take a loss, they usually come back fighting pretty strong. So what do you, what do you think they're going to look to adjust here in game two? I mm -hmm. think... Uh, we're not gonna see any wild card picks because you okay. As I say that they pick torture, I take everything back. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. So what I expected from Shorken is to just uh, draft a very strong lineup. As like, look, Moira and Angie are open, Rally's open. I thought he's gonna draft them because he wants to boost the team morale after a loss. A bit. <laughs> so get into the game three with. With motivation, but looks like he's going for unconventional picks here for for him. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, really no more, no Moira pick, no rally, no chipper. I mean, this is this is okay. no engineer. This is unlike Big Ego Crew. I'm I'm pretty yeah, excited. None of them here. Are banned. I think I they really got like something this. something up their sleeves here with the. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna see some like oddball farming mm -hmm. heroes this game. I really hope so. Although I do do think that. Unless you have like a five hero draft in your head, picking five experimental individual heroes That's true, is not yeah. exactly the way to go. So maybe he'll pick a couple of standard ones as well. Okay, and... I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think we're gonna see Sapphire this game. I'm pr I'm like 98% sure Wasn't I'm, pro really I'm probably wrong. Yeah, but I just I want to <laughs> see them. I want to see them pick something unconventional. <laughs> I mean, I I'm like 98% sure it's not going to happen, but, you know, you never know. Maybe maybe Hex is listening and they'll be like, oh, we got you, Wig. We'll pick up Sapphire. We, we've played it before. Sapphire to you is like Berserker to Breaky. Huh? <laughs> it's like, right uh, now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. When people pick the Berserker back in the day, they were like, go Breaky. <laughs> oh, Sir Bensington, okay. Okay. We, we've actually seen Dutch play that a couple of times. So, mm -hmm. um, do you think that they're going to play a single core Bensington, or do you think they'll pick up uh, like another semi carry, like another scaling kind of core to go with the Bensington? What do you think Big Eagle Crew is going to do? I think the latter one. I a think they're going to semi -carry? put a semi carry. What I expect right now, seeing those picks, because Bensington is great, I think, in a solo 1v1 lane because he gets XP quick and can uh, use his Nightfall to to gank other lanes. Okay. But also, I guess, good with supports to set up kills. So it is versatile that way. And But I never saw Bensington as that solo carry, although if they do snowball hard, I can see it carry games, of course. But... Mm -hmm. For now, Shurkan's pick Scream Child into me. And so they would want, pretty sure, a kind of a core hero in their solo lane. Whether that be uh, Bansington or another hero. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that's, what, that's just what I expect. But I might be wrong, as I was before. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. I'm going to just quickly go through the draft. We got Draconis okay. and Madman. I believe those were the same two bands from Big Ego Crew last game. So despite switching sides, they, they keep their bands the same. Then we have Electrician and Ophelia from Hex. So Ophelia, I think, is the, uh, the standout one this game. And we've seen Max play a pretty pretty solid Ophelia uh, on the occasion. And they actually, I believe, won uh, one of the matches in Cycle 7. That was last cycle, yeah. Cycle mm -hmm. seven yeah. with a, a pretty dominant Ophelia game, so that band makes uh, makes some sense. We have Sandwraith, Engineer, and Bombardier. The bands coming out from Big Ego Crew, and we have Pebbles, the Gladiator, and Pharaoh. So all strength boys coming out from Hex. I think they're expecting some, uh, like you pointed out, the tri lane with 
the strength heroes on the solo lanes. So those bands make a lot of sense to you as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And oh, I saw Satellitium, Shadow Peak, Calamity for a while, which would make sense to be honest with their draft, because it's kind of nice with the Banzington to set up a Nightfall, as well as providing a bit of a backup carry. So what do you think uh, about the go... Magmus being shadow picked? We haven't seen a Magmus uh, band here, and that hero is usually like blind band material. Do you think we'll see a Magmus from Big Ego Crew? Yeah, it's a bit interesting because yeah, Magmus is obviously one of those heroes that is just great in almost every draft. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's just such a great hero, and uh, not having banned any of Big Ego's you know standard Ooh. heroes. I saw Sate was... shadow picking Kraken, which <laughs> which someone in the chat was saying they they thought they were gonna pick up a Kraken, and I was actually thinking Wretched Hag because I know Sate likes Hag a lot, and that would be a semi carry or semi core with the Benzington. They're gonna go with a Gauntlet. The They're gonna go with a Gauntlet here. So we ha I don't think we've seen Big Ego oh, Crew play Gauntlet. It's safe to say that's a new one. And and yeah, what do you think about them picking up the Monarch after the Gauntlet? So the Gauntlet can now use his uh the martyr you mean what did i say After the gauntlet right monarch <laughs> oh you know why because they have both a monarch and a martyr yeah, yeah. so the gauntlet blast can actually purge the wings and the cocoon from both those heroes as well as the master's call can you imagine they they go and unload all their stuff on one guy and the gauntlet, <laughs> gauntlet just comes flying in with the gauntlet blast and purges everything it's actually a pretty uh, pretty nasty pickup. And he has a lot of uh, squishy targets to kind of focus on, right? Like, he's got a lot of burst targets. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah, definitely. What I think is a... Uh, oh. Okay. Okay, so apparently both teams are agreeing that the Calamity should be okay, so uh, shadow banned due to having uh, some bugs for... Uh, I won't name any things, but... The Calamity okay. is supposed to be mutual banned for the uh, remainder of the patch. So they're actually going to swap that pick and we'll do a remake here and all pick. But right. we talked a lot about Big Ego Cruise Draft, the Andrew, the Tort, Benzington, and the Gauntlet so far. They're going to pick up a fifth hero. But we didn't really talk completely about Hex's lineup. They have Master of Arms, Cthulhu Font, Monarch, Martyr, and now an Amun-Ra. So what do, you, <laughs> what do you think about that lineup? It's a pretty... Pretty defensive lineup. I mean, lots of like two tanky heroes and then three heroes with lots of protection. Definitely. Uh, it is an interesting idea from Zuki. I guess trying for the tanky and defensive supports lineup. I do fear the, for the supports being picked by Gauntlet all around. But uh, <clears throat> we will see how it plays out. I definitely think they want their timing to be around 20 minutes ish when the raw gets tanky enough. Okay, I need to join quick so they don't scold me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yell at you too, it's okay. <laughs> gonna have a... I put the photo of Max, so it's good. And so, yeah, that, li that looks like an interesting lineup. I didn't see who was playing the martyr, but I expect Duder because I've seen so much Duder martyr. And do you remember? Dude was the one who played Jungle Martyr back in the day, a bit back in the day. Uh, so I wonder if you they... might be right about yeah. that. And I know because after that, after he played Jungle Martyr, I seen Jungle Martyrs everywhere in TMM. It was so annoying. <laughs> that sounds so, yeah. really not fun. Yeah. So anyway. So I, I, I do, I'm interested in seeing what they are going to bring to the table here. And, uh, but the more, well, not more interesting, but the more surprising fact is Shorkan's draft that, as Wu pointed out in the chat, Shorkan has found the rest of the hero pool. <laughs> and he hasn't, like, and none of Shorkan's uh, comfort picks were banned, like Moira, Riley, Angie. So he, but he didn't pick up any of them. So I'm proud of his Shorkan. Nice draft. Uh, that's experiment. Props to Big Ego Crew for picking different yeah. heroes. <laughs> yeah. They're not as I've boring been... as we we all know them I've... to be. Yes, I've been uh, nagging them about it in this cast, so <laughs> maybe they. <laughs> so, I'm trying to remember their lineup. Uh, what did they say Which... was the pick that was supposed to be Calamity? 
hag. It was hag. So you kind of called it, right? Oh, uh, so they actually do pick up a hag. Okay, so we're going to see probably Benzington on Dutch, hag on Satellidium, and then I believe they had a torture uh, and Andro. And a, I think. Maybe. Oh. So that's I interesting. Think, uh, I think I saw Dutch on torture, but it might have been uh, a just a, you know, quick swapping, not really the players. So but if they were... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Um, yeah. So they had Andrew Torture, Hag, Gauntlet, and what was their last hero? Did you say Bensington? Bensington, yeah, you're right. So I was going to say, if they decide to run an aggressive tri lane with Bensington, where would you like to see like the Hag and the Gauntlet? Like, Who do you think should go mid and who should go short lane? Uh, I need to think about it because I don't have both the lineups in my head right now. True. So... I think it depends on heroes, like who do they expect mid, who do they expect uh, right. on short lane, but I think Gauntlet, it, by like default, I think Gauntlet should go mid. Okay, you can... think he, he will control the tempo of the game a bit better than a hag? Yeah, he can do more with the runes, I think, and <clears throat> overall can set up better stuff mid, and a bit, well, both heroes have kind of nice survivability oh. for ganks, so... Mm -hmm. I think both, either way is fine, but I think Gauntlet's gonna be mid. And you might be right, Sade is playing Hag and Vulka is playing Yeah, I, I think Sate is like the designated Hag player for Big Ego Crew. Mm -hmm. um, Snooki's actually playing Moa, okay, I was that I was not expecting. Are they doing a mid lane Moa? Could be, in which case I think I'd definitely prefer the gauntlet in the mid lane for gank ability and I think Moa kind of wrecks Hag in 1v1. One one. <clears throat> but So Amun-Ra and Monarch, is that going to be the short lane and then Martyr with Cthulhu Fa in the long lane? Mm -hmm. I suppose so. We could also see a Martyr-Monarch-Ra tri lane? <laughs> yeah. Predicting Snooki's uh, drafts and lineups and laning is always <laughs> is always iffy a bit, but yeah, so maybe. Dude, I think Dude's playing the position three this game. Oh my, you might be right. I I do not think we'll see farm on Martyr. Like that would be a little weird. I think. Uh, hmm. I think the farm on Cthulhu would be true, a bit but better. It, it farmed the Arena last game too, so. That's it true. It is possible, I suppose. I think a Luna is a bit different than a Martyr, though. I think a Luna can do a lot more with farm. Yeah, you're right. To a Martyr. But, well, let's see what items everyone buys. I, I do think Master of Arms mid is not the, uh, the most unusual thing, as he can kind of just clean out waves with Acid Bomb and kind of get the runes yeah. and stuff. Okay, Martyr buys a sink. And he has, pretty, he has pretty decent damage as well. And mm -hmm. Hag, Hag, who has naturally low armor, I think, uh, could take a lot of pressure from uh, from Moa as well. She's not the strongest laner against ranged heroes. She's more more notably stronger against melees, where she can just spam the haunt and kind of beat them down a bit, kind of control the creeps, uh, creep wave. This is interesting, because they're not going to try him with Dutch. They're going to leave him alone in the bot lane with the boot health bar. <clears throat> they're going to try him with Vulka. So they're Which... they're doing a killing tri lane with uh, torture, Andromeda, and Gauntlet. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a nasty tri lane, though. <clears throat> Safe to say that that's uh, pretty scary. Mhm, mm for sure. Uh, I mean, I can. Uh, I'm I'm fine either way. Uh, both heroes can do great with levels, both the Gauntlet and Bensington. Um, I would still put Bensington top if I was the call maker, but I don't think. They can be criticized too hard for this lane. lane yeah, I, I agree. And I think Gauntlet is a hero that he doesn't necessarily need farm. He just needs levels. He When he gets high high XP, he can burst people down with just using his three abilities. Whereas uh, the items are more luxury, I think, than anything. Getting that quick portal key, getting something like a Hellflower, some some follow-up item to, uh, to that PK. Yeah, for sure. And... Uh, what do you make of them putting Torture as the main support and Andro as the second support? Do you like that or do you think it should have been swapped 
the other way around. I think Torture does way better than with items than Andromeda. I really like Torture's second support over main support. That's that what I was thinking as well. That hero does so much damage with just the steam boots and perhaps the gnomes. And you can just do wonders. A stun comes out, hook comes out, but Amunra is gonna thank the hook for the monarch and he's a bit tankier so he's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean training with a gauntlet definitely doubles their kill potential here. So Halberd team kinda needs to be scared of the hooks permanently. <laughs> It's almost like they're doing a similar trial lane to what Hex ran last game with the Devo, except they're swip, swap, swapping it up with a gauntlet and having the hooker as the farmer. <laughs> yeah. It almost kind of reminds me of like the prisoner trial lane days. That's a really, really long time ago, but... Oh, yeah. Prisoner obviously prisoner. can hook through creeps as well as gauntlet, so... The, the gauntlet and the prisoner, you know, in comparison to Devour, they have a bit of an easier time in trial lane setting up those hooks. So Bali, we're actually going to have Andro TP. Looks like this is going to evolve into two 2-1-2 two, two lane setups. A lot of damage coming out onto the Cthulhu font. And that will actually be the Bloodlust kill as he did not get the trample off in time. The Joust coming in, catching them off guard in the bot lane. And again, that's supposed to be their position 3, right? Uh, although he is sitting at 68 GPM, so I'm not exactly sure. And Martyr sells his Synchronizer, so I guess he's farming now? I have no idea. I didn't actually see a synchronizer on Martyr. I, he did buy. I mean, he might have sold it right away, but I saw it uh, in oh, three early. Okay. Um. So yeah, Moa is. Well, I say he was winning the mid lane, but it looks like it's. Oh little... heck! He has no blink skill, and this is a haste to do the fun. So I think he definitely. Oh can no! Just... A bottle comes in though, but I don't think it's. Gonna I think matter. he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is like so unfortunate. I think I think the idea there to skip blink was okay, but the fact that it spawned a haste was just yeah, <laughs> Un unfortunate for Sada there. That's a bit of a tilt there. Uh, he's been doing fine mid as well against the Moa. He was 11 and two against Moa 15 and. Seven. Yeah, Moa yeah. just uh, started picking it up as he left the lane, but. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But this this way of laning definitely reduces kill potential in the top lane. Amun Ra but... top lane. Here comes the chain reaction stun into the hook, and I think he still has the fist. Uh, actually, he hasn't skilled the fist yet. That's interesting. I'm a little bit surprised by that. That gauntlet doesn't have his Q yet. Sure, a lot of damage. Oh my god, they're both one HP. Yes, power supply on <laughs> gauntlet though. He's uh, yeah, baiting it a little bit, but. Uh, I feel like uh, if that was a, if there was Gauntlet Blast or Both Infernal lane. Instability skill, that they would get a kill there. Joust is going to come in, they're going to have enough damage to kill Martyr. Thulafon, he doesn't have mana for a trample, but he does have mana for the Obliterate, but it doesn't matter. Double tap wow. coming out for Sir Bensington. Uh, well played by Legion, Dutch and Shorkan, showing them who's boss. Let's see if, uh, who gets the 4 minute rune. As Moa has nine denies now, he is uh, level five and a half compared to Hag just hitting the level five, and the rune will spawn bottom. Hag now has her blink; she will get that <laughs> rune a little bit faster. Definitely, and yeah, I agree with you. I think Gauntlet might have skill doing hook or for the extra one range, or the extra range, but I think that would be only good if they remain three here. Because the X range is good against uh, passive playstyle, right? When they're staying a bit further back. But now that they are 2v2, Halborn has no reason to sit at their tower, kind of just gaining XP. They can go up for last hits. Yeah, I feel like so, having yeah. one in the hook would have been plenty for the laning phase, because 800, 800 cast range on hook uh, in lane is just fine. Yeah, I, I agree. So, definitely agree with you there. Uh, it looks like, let's see how other lanes are doing. So, bot lane, we have definitely transitioned to Martyr Farming, who's sitting on 23 last hits, 270 GPM, compared to 24 last hits, but 2 kills on Bensington, so 360 GPM. So, Dutch definitely comfortable here as Aluna, uh, Andromeda trying to rotate mid, mm -hmm. but yeah. 
spider sense is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of playing very, very smart there without even having the vision. But what, what do you think we're going to see from Martyr this game? Like, what is a Martyr with farm going to buy? Because I don't think we really ever see Martyr in a farming world. Top lane, Top lane Master. Now. Oh, that's not Master's Call. What am I saying? No, it was Master's Call. Oh, it was Master's Call. Yeah, and he still ended up falling. They get the yeah. kills onto both uh, Gauntlet and Torture. So I guess the Master's Call bought them enough time to get two kills instead of only one. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a good turn. As they were going for the raw uh, first and the Monarch later. Uh, Hag picks up a Soul Trap. Ooh, double damage Benzington. We'll see if they go for anything here. Dutch does oh. use the DD here. And Andro is going to stun up the Cthulhu font. The Joust will miss. Here comes a Retribution from Martyr. One more auto attack. Andro should fall here. They do make it one for one. But Dutch might go for the uh, the second kill. Here comes a Soul's Conviction, it looks like. Oof. Oh my god. Look at that damage coming out from the Retribution. And, uh, well, yeah, that's the power of Martyr. Top lane, they get the kill on some Monarchs. So, Amun-Ra, I think. Wait, did he die again? It looks like he died yeah. again. So yeah, I'm gonna run not hitting the level six doesn't have his spiroclasmic rebirth just yet. And uh Ra has now died for the second time. Martyr, yeah, top GPM in the definitely. game, were you expecting that? <laughs> definitely not. He just picked up two kind of good kills. Well, I guess one good kill and one support kill. So definitely swing the laning in his favor. <laughs> Yes, looks like he has an looking. astrolabe now. That that's gonna be uh, pretty hard to bring down the martyr. Mm -hmm. Or the Cthulhu fan for that fact, with the martyr protecting him. <laughs> now with his ultimate and his astrolabe. So looks like Hex has given up their top lane. They're just sending Ra to the jungle. Maybe he just wanted to level six for now. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. He's gonna continue because, jungling uh, though, and they'll just let Gauntlet free farm up here. I wonder if we're gonna see a staff martyr. Uh, PK staff. I've seen that. Kind of. It's kind of a troll build though. Uh, maybe they're going for the. The farm will the miss trample. the uh, trample stun here. They might go for a kill here. Here comes the joust. Hand in hand comes out from martyr though. And Cthulhu is back to full health. Now the obliterate has worn off. Trample coming up in two more seconds. The comet stun will connect though, and that will be a kill. Martyr has no mana. Soul's conviction might come out. We'll see if he. Uh, no, it looks like he's gonna end up falling here. He's too low to swap the health and mana. Oh, uh, yeah. They brought Cthulhu Fan down twice and with the Astro, so <laughs> definitely putting out a lot of damage between the two of them the Bantam mm -hmm. and the Andromeda. <clears throat> Perhaps a bit too much for this lane. Nice hook coming out in the top lane, and Monarch is gonna eat the gauntlet. Full damage. Yep, he still has a uh, gauntlet blast and I, I was actually looking at master and hag and they had both 341 gpm now hag just takes up the creep wave so she's a little bit ahead but they were pretty much identical they have uh, the almost master... the same exact creep kills i did think the master is gonna uh win that lane versus the hag but i guess i underestimated hag's lane presence they both kind of probably just pushed up lanes towards each other and you miss Master Dog. They're going for the gauntlet, I think. Yep, gauntlet's gonna hook the raw backward. Here comes the overcharge shot. And uh, Moa uses the Master's Call. Big damage coming in onto Torture. That was only three attacks, but Tower. Yeah, because he is had there. Bulldozer, uh, uh, level three. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, well, two points. He, he's put two points in Bulldozer, boosting his attack damage. Mid lane, we're gonna have a swap come out following up the Bat Blast, and Moa is just going to melt to the uh, Sonar Scream on top of the, all that damage. So, Snooki is killing Master, interestingly, as he's just putting one in the Overcharge Shot. I, I like it. This yet, I like but, that. Yeah, I like it too. <laughs> I actually think that that's the correct way to play a, a farming Moa. Mm -hmm. Just have one point in the stun. I've only I've only played support my said life. <laughs> uh you could probably argue that him having a couple more in stun is also okay, but I think having the extra damage in bulldozer is just oh, fine. I see, I see. For laning. Um setup coming out bottom lane for the Legion team. 
Yep, no swap, swap on Andro for 27 yeah. seconds. But she's kind of fast, so... But TP coming in and dude is gonna tank that. Uh, and then hand comes out from Martyr, the Chrysalis comes out as well. And he's gonna take a lot of damage here. He's got one second on the joust. The stun comes in from Torture just in time to give uh, Bensington the distance. And mid lane, they actually kill Moa again, this time with the help of Gauntlet. He uses the, the blast, I think. Bottom lane, we have Cthulhu Fontaine. A swap coming out from Shorkan. I think that actually might have canceled an auto attack as well. Torture, he pops the Torment, but he's gonna get blocked in the creep wave there. Here comes a Nightfall as Bensington, I think, has healed up. Cutting off the uh, the fallback here. Chrysalis, or excuse me, the Crippling Pollen coming out. And here Standing comes the drown. Twig. <laughs> Benzington, that is the power of the Global Presence as he ports back to base and uh, heals up and Night falls back. So he is here once again. <laughs> so uh, safe to say Big Eagle crew uh, looking quite strong here in game number two. 15 to yeah. 6 hero kill lead. That was a great play by Dutch, just porting out, coming back. A nice swap by Shurkan, saving the saving the Bensington from taking a lot of counter damage. <clears throat> and, yeah. Amun Ra is at a pretty quiet game. He he just picks up his helm now in 500 gold. It's only sitting like on 300 gold per minute. Except for the Martyr has had a kind of a quiet game right now from Hellborn. Uh, Martyr has been kind of the in the spotlight for most of the. Most of the turnarounds and uh, weird things happening. <clears throat> yep. But also, the Moy has had a bit of quiet game. He's been getting ganked constantly by the Gauntlet and the Andromeda. So his his uh, farm has. There was a, a bat blast bit. on him. And so an yeah, ice cream comes done. out. That could actually take a lot of return because... pressures here, but here comes the one punch. Oh, oh he's gonna swap him back in. <laughs> Monarch almost was able to make the save. Here comes that Ra. is just an illusion. Here comes Ra. Ra, go Ra. Well, no boost. Oh, wait, he does have boost. Never mind. The gauntlet's just too fast with those uh, ghost marchers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Running out of range for Ra. And. Well, I'm not sure about the. Uh, Hex's plan is right now. And it's like stun comes out in the martyr, but only a bit of poking. But they seem to be losing all three lanes. So they need something to recover. And initiation in the martyr, but they're not gonna follow it up. Yeah, Dutch kinda wanted his bottle back. <laughs> and Shorkan <laughs> just ran in and stunned. I was watching that. Um Gauntlet's sitting on one K gold, so. I'm expecting the, the portal key right away. Top tower is falling though. We'll see if they make a de defense here with any TPs. Here comes the glyph. I'm sure Bulk is calling for TPs. He probably wants to defend this. Here comes a hook. And uh, here comes the nightfall. It's going to miss in the background. They get the deny as Hag takes it out. Here comes Master's Call though onto Ra. He still has the Pyroclasmic Rebirth. He will use it there. And I don't see him getting out of this one. So they actually get the deny and two kills, so that was yeah, well, I, dive on the I think exactly what they were what they were looking for, yeah. Andromeda does end up falling. Bensington ports in with his normal TP now. Martyr, he's gonna use the Soul's Conviction, but the, the twig comes out and here comes another joust onto Cthulhu Font. Gauntlet flies in. Or more Almost so a full uses genocide. The hook. Only Moya left alive and he's stealing some stacks in the Legion Jungle, but this is really dangerous because there are Four heroes, well, three heroes in the bot lane right now for Legion, mm -hmm. and they could be running here at any time. And I think Max on Torture has spotted it and has placed a word to make sure this Detective Max, go. he's saying, hmm, um, why are these, um, why are these creeps missing health? I'm gonna farm these. <laughs> Max, uh, very notorious for having 300 GPM all the time on support, so yeah. this is how he does it. He uh, he whispers <laughs> Nookie to come into the jungle and nuke them down for him, and then he. Cleans them up himself. Definitely. Also, torture good at last hitting towers, so definitely a good max hero. I like to see oh. people picking up the Ophelia's Pact. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't see this utilized uh, as often as I would like. And uh, he gets the five stacking done there as well. I think after they took it out of the game because it was bugged, it kind of got forgotten. And now 
<laughs> and the uh, bot lane and Germany take a lot of damage, but it's gonna be fine with the tablet. He already had the tablet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, here comes Hasted Master. Bensington uses the defensive joust. Bat Blast oh, on to Solo <laughs> Moa. Zanuki is saying, man, why is it always me taking these Bat Blasts? I, I think, you think that's a little bit personal from the uh, Artesia game last game? <laughs> uh, here comes maybe, the Comet uh... Stun on to Monarch. They're going to take him out. Andro, oh, a swap actually going to come out. And I think Shorkan's going to make the escape here. That was a pretty nice swap. Martyr goes down in the background. Hook will miss, unfortunately, from Boca. He, uh, oh. yep, dude's gonna um, trample up the cliff, but Hag's gonna snipe him out there. He kinda ran hasted into that bad blast in his face. <laughs> you know, Not I just noticed Martyr doesn't have his wings. What do you think about that? Well, maybe he didn't skill it because it's the gauntlet, but I still think it's worth to get it. Yeah. I don't know how Soul's Conviction, how good it is. I don't feel like it's worth maxing. I feel like, sure, you get the cooldown reduction. Sure, you get to swap the percentages faster. I mean, there's benefits to maxing this, but I, I just feel like the wings. I think level one of that ability provides you plenty of turn potential with full mana. And like when you have low HP, you can swap it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I agree. I so, think just the yeah. damage reduction, uh, even level one, 55%. And Satellite on 520 GPM on this hag, I did not expect him to snowball this hard. Even uh, even after having that me. one death in the beginning, uh, yeah, to that haste in Cthulhu font. Oh yeah, an unfortunate start, but he's proving to be very comfortable in this hero and very dominant in this game. <clears throat> I'm taking out stacks. Meanwhile, we have Rob picking up 400 GPM now. He picks up the Shaman's Hedris. Uh, what do you think we're gonna see from Raw next? Do you think he's just gonna go full tank mode, like a heart or something, or do you think we'll see some damage item like a mock? Well, for now, he's gonna probably complete the barrier to get his team a bit of team fight ability, because okay. I, I'm pretty sure they're quite a bit. They know they're quite a bit behind, so they need a bit to win a couple team fights to come back. Kensington's all alone up here in the top lane, and he's getting collapsed on. We'll see if he uh, gets caught or not. They're trying to block the joust with Ra, and they will actually block it. Dutch is going to end up falling. But meanwhile, nice in the bot position. lane, we have uh, Martyr and Cthulhu Fon both dying in exchange for Torturer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nice positioning by Whoop, but I do think Dutch could have jousted that earlier. Yeah. Just to make sure he doesn't die. Completely agree with. <laughs> Both things you said there was well played by Whip as well to uh, make sure to block the joust. <clears throat> so something like a Porto key is not alien Ra either, since they don't really have that PK initiator because like uh, Cthulhu is not farming, it's also died eight times. So <clears throat> it could be a PK or it could be a heart. It also could be a mock. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're just gonna see what. This team decides to go for in terms of game plan. I think if they wanna, if they wanna keep fighting, I think a tanky item is better on Ra than a damage item. They're gonna kill the torture here. I think. Ooh. Oh, they switch in here. And oh wow, nice juking coming up. They got the, the hag here with bad blast. She picks up a staff of the master. They're gonna get the monarch taken out right away. Ra does have the rebirth, so he comes back. Yep, so torture but. in exchange for uh, Monarch. We'll see if they re-engage. Gauntlet looking to line up a hook. A nice two man. Gauntlet blast stunning up the Martyr with the stasis. And here comes Bensington on top with the Nightfall. The swap coming out onto Ra. He is the sole survivor. And he will fall. It is a hat trick coming out for Hag. And we have seen a completely different game here in game and number two. Yep, a full game. genocide. 570 gold per minute on the Hag. And Bensington not doing too bad himself, 415 gold per minute. So it's looking pretty good here for the side picks up the of back. Big Ego group. As well, the no fist damage. Hag is insane right now. Mm -hmm. He's so strong. As also, Shurkan has been in 24 out of 31 kills. That's very impressive to be involved in so much action. I think he's definitely the one making all the plays for his team uh, yeah, in this game. He's got a and a tablet picked up as well. So shout out to Shorkan doing the support's job very excellently. <laughs> I agree. And Hag already has the ultimate backup. 
the team fight just pretty much came to a conclusion. Uh, so yeah, the staff already coming into play, and uh, we'll see what he what he looks to pick up next. Possibly uh, some kind of uh, disable item like a sheep or a health flower. I don't think we'll see the staff just yet, but perhaps uh, a little bit later we might see something like an upgrade to Bensington. Uh, could we're be. Gonna have TP's coming into the bot lane. Let's see if they can get the catch. But it looks like Hex has fallen back here. I um, predict the shrunken Hex for now, but maybe with the gnomes he's already. Oh, Hex is gonna catch him. Moa here. <laughs> Snooki getting solo that blasted once again. He oh, is. No. He is not <laughs> happy, man. I, I tell you, man, secretly, Snooki's like, why always me? Why always solo vet blast? Why is it always me? And uh, so I didn't really talk about it, but he's had a tablet and a brass knuckles for quite a while now. Do you like his uh, his item choices here? Uh, again, I'm not sure what uh, Auburn team's plan is with this draft. So in his, it might fit his idea, but consider what goes out, so I don't know. <laughs> What's going on? GG. Yeah, looks like the GG's, GGs are called. The Brad Blast, and you can see if it comes out. So yeah, his item build, I don't know. His Their their plan, I think, didn't succeed. They lost all three lanes, so maybe he's adapted his item build for early team fighting instead of farming, which he might have wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it remains a mystery. When... Uh, you know when when people draft unconventional drafts like Snooki does a lot and they don't work out, it is kind of hard to tell what their plan was because because it obviously didn't work out, so we didn't see it in action. Yeah. So we would we would have to see what or we would have to ask ask Snooki what he wanted to do with the draft to to learn uh, why he bought the tablet, why he bought the brass knuckles instead of, for example, like a D claw or whatever standard more items are there. Maybe even uh, no an all-fire blade or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and I think I, I'm afraid that if we asked, I think the answer might just simply be, "I wanted to play Moa. I wanted to play Martyr." <laughs> so, <laughs> so there might yeah. also just be a little of that as well. Um, 